Goobertown Hobbies. Welcome to Goobertown. Welcome to this episode of Goobertown Roulette. My name is Brent, and I'm about to paint a random mini in a random paint scheme. Wish me luck. Time to roll. Six. Theme challenge. Roll again. One. Hopeful theme. Alright, let's get those colors out. First color. Three is a warm color. That should be good for hopeful. Three. Yellow orange. First color is yellow orange. Secondary color is a cool color. Roll again. Four. Blue. Yellow orange and blue. Hopeful theme. What is the model? Hopeful theme. Yellow, orange, and blue. What do we got? <laughs> This'll be sweet. Happy about that. Wow. This is a great roll and a great pick. I'm supposed to make this squig hopper look hopeful. There are already two giant smiles on the model, so this is going to be a lot of fun. Goblin models tend to be funny and cheery, and this one in particular is great. As for the color requirements, I'm going to stick with green for the goblin, and let the robe and the squig be the blue and the yellow-orange. Squigs and night goblins live in caves, so I'm giving him a stony base. I glued some rocks and some sand down, and brushed on some Vallejo airbrush primer black. While all that was drying, I whipped up some mushrooms with green stuff and staples. We'll get to those later. All of the models in my treasure bin start with a zenithal primer job. Black underneath, then spritzes of gray and white to light the figure from above. To really make that pre-shading pop, I'm giving the model a heavy dry brushing with white paint. I'm trying to really hit the top of the model and the raised edges to simulate natural highlights and shadows. Some of this shading will show through the translucent paints and washes, and should give the impression that I'm a better painter than I actually am. My plan for the base is to dry brush it, so I'm getting that done now so I don't make a mess later. First, a medium gray, then a light gray. I'm leaving a lot of black showing for some nice contrast. I'm going to paint the squig with washes, which is the main reason I wanted to have that pre-shading in place. I have a yellow wash, an orange wash, and a yellow-brown wash. I'm starting with Yellow Snow from Secret Weapon Miniatures. You can see that the pre-shading is very obvious. I'm actually a little bit worried that there's too much black left on the squig, which will be really prominent even after all the wash layers are applied. But let's keep going and see how it looks a little bit. I chose a nice happy crystal blue for the cloak. Although I'm doing the squig flesh with washes, I'm going to use a more traditional paint layering scheme for the rest of the model. This blue will be the mid-tone, and I'll make the folds and creases in the cloak either a good bit darker or a good bit lighter. For the goblin skin, I chose snake scales green. Again, nice and light and happy. It looks like it will go really well with the yellow and blue that I've already laid down. This will be the mid-tone, and I'm planning on adding shading and highlights to the color to complete the flesh tone. It's always good advice to lay down two thin coats of paint, so I went back and strengthened the yellow, and the blue, and the green. For the horns, I'm throwing down a layer of skeleton bone. I probably could have made a spicier choice, something with more color and more contrast to the squig skin tone, but horn color for horns makes sense. Let's do it and keep moving. Here I'm hitting the warts on the squig with green wash. I want the warts to be discolored from the majority of his skin. I also want to get this discoloration on the model before the final washes of the squig, so that everything blends together nicely. Next, I'm putting some Dirt Splatter Brown on the leather bits. This brown reminds me of the old Games Workshop Bestial Brown, or Vallejo's Beastie Brown. 
nice wholesome brown. Moving on, I want to make the squig skin yellow orange. I've got yellow on there, so now I'm coming back with the orange. I've diluted the secret weapon orange a bit with pledge floor care, essentially a cheap gloss medium. My plan is to thin down the orange so that some of the yellow highlights still show through, like on the eyebrows and nose. This layer will leave a bit of a gloss finish, which will really help the future brown wash slide away from the highlights and into the recesses. So we not only have highlights going from dark to light, but also from brownish to orange to yellow. Now that a lot of the base coats are down, it's time for some shading. This is straight from the bottle Army Painter Green Tone. The plan is to get the shading in, then work back up to snakeskin, then keep highlighting past that. Next, I grabbed some red wash and put that in the mouth of the goblin and the mouth of the squig. I really like the details of the teeth on these models. Such a fun detail, especially because I want them to be happy and smiling. So I want to get the red in the mouth so that there's a really nice contrast between whatever I'm going to paint the teeth and the back of the mouth. Back to two thin coats, doing another layer of brown and another layer of skeleton bone. And finally getting around to a couple more details. I'm coming back with some fur brown for the ropes, a nice reddish brown that goes nicely with the rest of the color palette here. Silver dagger is next. Here I'm using Vallejo Air metallics. As a side note, I am terrible with metallic paints, so don't pay attention to me here. On a future episode, I hope to learn non-metallic metals so I can avoid these paints in the future. Finally, a little bit of rough iron from Army Painter for the hilt. This reminds me of the old Tin Bits color from Games Workshop. A nice janky metal for a goblin. Back to orange. The undershading that I did with black and white is still apparent, but it's starting to look natural and I think this is turning out just fine. Actually, I think it's turning out pretty good. Okay, just a little bit more red in the mouths, getting ready to paint some teeth, and layering up on those ropes. Okay, on to a blue wash. So this is blue from Secret Weapon Miniatures, and I'm putting it on in the hopes that I can add a little bit of interest and shading to the cloak, but it turns out this color is too similar to the base coat, and I think I'm going to need to come back with something a little bit different once this dries. In the meantime, the squig skin is dry, so time to put on our first brown wash. This is heavily diluted with that pledge floor care, which is why this model is so glossy, but it's flowing very nicely, it's flowing over the highlights into the recesses, and we're really getting that nice transition, not only dark to light, but also brown to orange to yellow. So the squig skin is starting to look pretty nice for minimal effort. While I'm at it, I'm putting that thin brown wash on the horns also. There's a little bit of texture there that I want to bring out. In addition, I'm starting to create a bit of a transition from the horn where it joins the head to the tip. I'll be doing that with more brown washes closer to the head and some highlights closer to the tip of the horn. Taking another stab at the blue cloak again. So now I have a wash called Sapphire, which is a darker blue wash. And I'm going in there and I'm trying to target the recesses. I'm a little bit wary about creating staining on cloth. And so I'm just going in and I'm trying to darken up the recesses in a controlled way. Well, with some major color blocks in place, it is time to work on the eyes. The basic strategy that I'm using here is to make sure that the eye sockets are nice and shaded, and then to make a white oval and a black dot for the pupil. This strategy, if done poorly, can look terrible, but I think we can get to something passable here. One key is to really make sure that the shape of the eyeballs is oval. I've got a tiny brush, and I'm really taking my time here to make those orbits symmetrical. 
Now it's time to paint the teeth. I switched to Brain Matter Beige, and I took that fine, fine detail brush and painted in each little triangle for the squig's teeth. And then for the goblin's teeth, I took an old detail brush, and I actually dry brushed in the teeth. There are too small, and there's too many of them for me to do it by hand. But I think the result actually looks pretty good. Okay, the time has come. Moment of truth. Time to dot the eye pupils. The goal is to get circles of roughly the same size and positioning for each eye. Of course, this is a goofy goblin who may have been drinking some wacky mushroom tea, so we can explain away misproportioned pupils, but I do want to try to get them pretty close and at least sort of looking in the same direction. And, without having to go back and retouch anything, I actually ended up with something pretty good. Next, I took Skeleton Bone and started to highlight back up on the horns and the toenails. And then I kept going with the lighter Brain Matter Beige. While I was at it, I touched up the teeth. Okay, the cloak still needs a lot of work. I made an executive decision, I'm going to wash the blue cloak and risk a little bit of staining. Took blue tone, mixed with a little bit of wash medium, and slopped it on. Now, a little bit of moon dust yellow for the fingernails. Coming back to the greens. Getting nice, vibrant colors on the skin is really important for the overall feel of this piece. I'm leaving some shaded regions for contrast, but I'm intending to take the highlights to a pretty bright place. Right now, I'm working with that original skin tone of snake scale green. While the green dries, I'm putting just a little bit of null oil there on the dagger. Now it's time for the next layer of highlights on the green. This is a yellow green called Poisonous Cloud. And I think the skin is starting to look pretty nice on this goblin. Ignoring for the moment that I'm basing him as if he's in a cave, I am highlighting as if he's in the sun, in a nice, happy, warm place. And now the time has come to highlight up the blue cloak. So coming back with that crystal blue, hitting the raised edges, and leaving the recesses dark. It's mushroom time. I made some mushrooms out of green stuff and staples, and I primed them with a little bit of Badger Steinal Res Neutral Color Primer. These are gonna really make the base fit the Night Goblin theme, and they're also an opportunity for a splash of color that should really make this model pop. I don't know much about mushroom biology, but I think they kind of grow in clusters. Happy little mushroom families. I'm trying to decide how many mushroom species there will be. It's an opportunity to put a lot of different colors down, but it could be good to have them all the same color as well. We'll think about it. Moving on to put a final highlight layer on the blue. This is Void Shield Blue. It's a nice light color, really pretty, really brings out the detail. As I'm putting this on, I am definitely thinking about what color to make those mushrooms. And I've decided they are all going to have red caps. That way, we get red into the model, and that red goes really well with the blue, the green, and the yellow. Those four psychological primary colors. Just nice, bright, happy, hopeful colors. And I'm really feeling good about where this is going. I put two coats of this vampire red down on the mushrooms. And as the second coat was just starting to dry, I dropped in a drop of a lighter red called Pure Red, just for a little bit of a transition there. Then, while I'm letting the red dry, I put down a coat of matte varnish on the squig. He's too shiny, time to dull it down. Got that matte varnish on, and then moved right back to the mushrooms. Got my detail brush out, and decided to give him a lot of pale yellow dots for a little bit of fun detail. So I'm very happy with the overall vibe of this model right now. Super happy, super bright, he makes me feel good. He's smiling, his squig's smiling, I'm smiling. So, it took about three hours to get to this point, 
what I'm going to do now is just go back through all the colors again, fix up the little details. I'm a little better at that when I hold the model right up to my face. And nobody wants to watch this for long, so let's skip ahead about an hour and see the finished product. Here we are. I am calling the model done now. Now, the challenge was to use blue and yellow-orange, did that, and then to make the model look hopeful. The thesaurus tells me that hopeful means optimistic, expectant, buoyant, cheerful, comfortable, confident, eager, enthusiastic, rosy, sanguine, trusting, and upbeat. And I gotta tell you, I am feeling all of those things. The colors are bright, the smiles are great, there's some simple but effective highlights, I'm satisfied. Now when the camera is way zoomed in like this and filming at 4K, I can see lots of errors. The knife is sloppy, the edge of the base is sloppy, the transitions on the cloak are a mess, but that's alright, you can't get me down today camera. I feel like painting up a whole cave of these little scamps now. This is the beauty of the Goobertown Roulette game. I painted up a model that I probably wouldn't have done otherwise, and I had a lot of fun doing it. Well there we go. I had a ton of fun painting up this little guy. He just makes me so happy. If you enjoyed this episode of Goobertown Roulette, please do me a favor, like, subscribe, comment, and come back again soon. Okay, that does it for this time. Thanks for tuning in.